right, so getting to the iPod Touch, this is probably the biggest product for a lot of people. Like I said, my favorite was the iPod Nano because I don't need an iPod Touch. I have an iPhone 3GS. But the iPod Touch is, like Steve Jobs said, they're now, they're now most popular iPod product on the market. That's probably bad grammar, but you guys get what I'm saying. Basically, it now has a retina display, which is amazing. Thank you. It now uses the Apple A4 chip. Awesome. Three-axis gyro, just like the iPhone 4 does. FaceTime support, finally, uh, with a front-facing camera. Thank you. This time last year, I made a video um, talking to everybody, saying, guys, stop complaining about the lack of camera. We'll most likely see one next year. And, well, it's now next year, and, look, we now have a camera. So now we can kind of see why Apple held off, because they wanted to get FaceTime going first on the iPhone. Um, and, plus, it's a big... It, it's a big marketing thing. When you see a thing, a uh, camera on the iPhone 4, of course Apple's user base is going to be like, oh, we really want that on the iPod Touch now. It's all about marketing, and they had to pace themselves very well, and I think they did. So now the iPod Touch finally is a camera. But wait, that is not it. There are now two cameras. i got to be honest, I did not expect this, um, but obviously in a good way. Why have one? Why have one run? Why have one when you can have two? So not only is there a front-facing VGA camera, which I believe is 640 by 40 resolution, possibly, I think, but the back camera is an HD camera just like the iPhone 4. This is just in time for Christmas. People will be making an HD videos, and of course the more cameras we have out there, the more YouTubers like myself will have, and we'll have all these nice HD YouTube videos. Basically the world is going HD, and I cannot express enough how cool that is. And um, of course you can edit with iMovie, with their $5 iMovie application. And it starts at just 229 for 8 gigabytes. I do not have a full list of the prices on my um, notes here, but you can go to apple.com and they have all the nice graphics on the front page right there. Let's talk about iTunes 10. Can I just take a moment to say iTunes 10? My God, that's pretty insane if you think about it. 10? 10 versions? Time freaking flies, guys. Time freaking flies, guys. That didn't sound right. So first off, iTunes 10 has a new logo. Got to admit, I'm not absolutely crazy about it, but it is definitely nice enough to appreciate because for one main reason, like Steve Jobs said, I'm going to say that a lot in this video, CDs are dead. Um, why there's a CD in the iTunes icon right now doesn't really make sense since I rarely import music into my iTunes anymore. If you're like me, I get most of my music off iTunes. Um, so, it makes sense that they're finally killing the CD in the logo. Goodbye CDs, it was nice knowing you. This next feature is easily my favorite feature out of iTunes 10, and that is Pink. You guys know I'm a social media addict, I freaking love social media. I'm addicted to Twitter and Facebook. Twitter.com slash David DeFranco, Facebook.com slash David DeFranco. Add me if you want, follow me. All the links are in the sub bar under my chin, right around here. So what is Ping? Ping is like a combination of Twitter and Facebook, but for music lovers like you and myself. Music is insanely popular, everybody likes music, and if you don't like music, you probably don't have a soul. Um, so why not create a social network around music? I gotta say, this is a total surprise to me. I did not expect Apple to enter the market of social networking. First, they entered the market of multiplayer gaming with Game Center, which I think is great. And then they entered the market of uh, social media with Ping. How will Ping.fm feel about this? Will there be a lawsuit on their hands? I don't know. But with that aside, the point is, Ping is a great network to get connected with your friends and family about music that you guys share similar interest in. So for instance, you can follow me on Ping. I don't know how to do that just yet. Um, I'll put a link under this video. Last but certainly not least, let's talk about the Apple TV. First, let me just say, you guys probably know by now, hopefully know by now, that I'm a big fan of the Apple TV. I have mine right over there. I use it weekly. Um, I usually use that to watch my podcast, and once in a while I rent a movie. If it's not at Redbox and I'm getting impatient, then I'll rent it on there. In my opinion, it's one of the most underrated products uh, that Apple currently sells, but that's exactly why it's a hobby. It hasn't been selling very well. Um, as Steve Jobs said, it's a hobby of theirs. If I say hobby one more time, I'm going to smack myself, because in my opinion, Apple just never marketed it correctly. The original ad with Jack Black... Um, I just was not a big fan of that ad. It was too simplistic, and it didn't really explain what the Apple TV does. Usually if I have somebody ask me, oh, David, what the hell is an Apple TV? I'm like, I don't know. Think of it as an, like an iPod for your TV, but obviously without the iPod. So what am I getting at here? 
Apple today finally introduced the second generation of the Apple TV. There's no storage, there's no syncing needed, it's very small. I believe Jobs said it's one fourth the size of the, of the original um, Apple TV. And um, it has the power supply built in, H HDMI port, an Ethernet port, Wi Fi support is, is obviously there, of course. And um, it does include the new aluminum Apple remote. So the basic premise of this new Apple TV is there are no rentals whatsoever, no purchases, no storage management. It's streaming only and no syncing required. There is photo slides, there is photo slideshow support, excuse me. And as um, I'm going to quote Jobs, it's silent, cool, and tiny. Silent, cool, and tiny is always good. I gotta say I'm a little disappointed in that the um, Apple TV does not have support for apps. And he didn't even mention the Magic Trackpad. I honestly expected the Magic Trackpad, trackpad to be announced with the new Apple TV in mind. I mean, this is great on my Mac Pro, and I'll have my video up on it in a couple days or so, a few days, hopefully within a week. Um, but I honestly expected Magic Trackpad support. Maybe they'll add that eventually uh, with a firmware update. I don't see why not, because this is, this is genius. You can just do this on your TV, you can scroll, you can zoom in on photos, and I'm just very surprised that they didn't introduce support for this. But with that aside, I gotta say it's a nice device. Um, I'm disappointed that you cannot keep media on there. But then again, it's really not a huge deal because if you're like me, I have my computer and Apple TV on the same network, which you should as well. I don't see why you have two separate wireless networks. Um, I'm really rambling. The point is, you can finally stream, not finally, you can stream your content to your Apple TV just as you do now, but without the storage. So in a way, it's kind of a downgrade, but not really because they also introduce Netflix support. Netflix support is great. In my opinion, that alone will sell much, much more devices. That's good grammar. Netflix support alone will sell many more Apple TV, Apple TV devices because if you're like me, I use Netflix on my Xbox 360 thanks to my good friend Jesse, Artist Jay Gray, follow him on Twitter. I'll put him in the video description. I, I use Netflix on my Xbox 360 almost every night to watch old episodes of The Office new movies that I think may interest to me and overall I just think it's a great interface but the Apple TV the, the, blah, 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 blah. the new Apple TV interface looks even cleaner because you get these nice big thumbnails um, instead of having to scroll horizontally you can scroll in a grid fashion which I think is pretty cool there's also support for um, YouTube of course it was always there Flickr photos is, that was always there I believe and mobile main I don't see why that wouldn't be there that's Apple's own cloud based service um, it's the same exact interface as, as, as before, but there are a couple extras, such as now you can read user reviews um, via RottenTomatoes.com, which is great because I always find myself checking my iPhone app before I watch a movie for the rating, but now I can check on the Apple TV itself if I'm renting a uh, TV show or a movie. Oh, and also, you can rent TV shows for $0.99. Cents. I think that's pretty cool. Ooh, that was a lot to talk about. Hopefully I covered everything, um, as, and as always, guys, if you have any questions or comments, Say so in the comment section, and um, of course, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, if you want to connect with me in a more connected level. Yes, I just said connect twice. And that is that, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. What was that? I don't I really need better outros.